In this demonstration, I will set up a dual boot with Windows and Linux. So to get started, go into Computer Management. In Disk Management, we can see that the entire hard drive is 60 gigs. And these three partitions were created by Windows during the installation process. To make room for Linux, we have to shrink the C drive. This is the total capacity of the C drive. This is how much free space is left on the C drive. And here we enter a desired value for the Linux partition. So now the C drive is now 40 gigs instead of 60 gigs. We now have 20 gigs for Linux. So now that we have created a partition for Linux, we need to go into the UEFI. In the UEFI, we have to check two settings. Here the secure boot has already been enabled. And we want to boot off the DVD. Now the reason why I am installing OpenSUSE is because it can be installed with secure boot enabled. Here the installer will propose a partition scheme. A majority of the time, what is suggested is not desirable. So we will change the partition scheme by going into the guided setup. Here it tells us that we have a 60 gig hard drive with Windows installed. Here it asks us what do we want to do with the existing Windows system. We select do not modify. We don't want to be erasing the Windows partition. And here it asks us, choose what to do with other partitions. And we want to keep remove if needed. Looking at the summary, it appears that everything is correct. But just to make sure, we want to go into the expert partitioner, start with current proposal, and as you can see from here, all the Windows partitions will not be modified, and Linux will be installed onto the 20 gig partition that was created earlier. We will now proceed with the installation. So now all we have to do is reboot. And from here we have two selections. The first one is OpenSUSE. And the second one is the Windows Boot Manager, which will boot up Windows 10. So let's go ahead and boot up OpenSUSE. Okay, everything looks good. So now let's go ahead and boot up Windows 10. by selecting the Windows Boot Manager. And there you have it. We now have a dual boot system with Windows and Linux.